lovely man who's told me about some new walks that I'm going to try. And many dew plants up on the downs to feed the water supply. And they're very ancient. And I've never actually seen them, so I'm going to walk up there and I'll show them to you next time. So let's get on. I had a terrific reaction to my four minutes on recording trumpets. And I kept it simple that uh, but a lot of people have said, ha, ah, hold on deck, you didn't talk about stereo and you didn't talk about the Decca tree. Oh, this is slippy, this is. I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, so I'm going to just, it'll be a little bit technical this this week. And by the way, this is Deck Klusky, serious writer skilled at makehits.com. Do visit the site. There's wonderful stuff on there. No matter where you click on, it brings you to other wonderful things. A lot of free stuff. A lot of, a lot of serious stuff that you have to pay for, unfortunately. Well, not really. I do believe that you should pay for all the knowledge in the world. That's the way I did it. And that's the way I recommend it to other people. Now, stereo as regards recording trumpets. And by trumpets, I mean anything like that. Even strings, saxes, flutes, any what you might call an ensemble, more than one person playing together. The natural inclination, and almost like recording guitar, natural inclination is to just put up two microphones spread apart and you think you're getting stereo. That is correct, but there's a huge but to that. In modern day recording, today recording, that sound that you reproduce there will not be what you call immediate enough. What we call in your face, or as I describe it, standing three feet in front of the speakers. Can't be. The way to achieve a stereo image and still get that in your face is to use close miking so let's take three trumpets. Close miking on the three trumpets if they're playing together. And then introduce the stereo, which I would suggest should be the three microphones panned as you would in the DAW or whatever you're using to record. And then further microphones. And that can be two microphones, say three or four feet, six feet away and that will give a good stereo image. Now further to that, what I tend to do with guitars, a single guitar say, is to do that miking technique, close in on the cab, far away, about six feet, and then one microphone in the furthest corner of the studio. For stereo, I'd put two microphones in the furthest corner of the studio. Now if you do that with trumpets, you'll end up with three, six, nine, nine microphone images that you can then play with and then achieve the desired effect. And also using the effects systems that I gave you with the digital reverb, digital echo, sorry, digital, digital echo and fed into a digital reverb. Going up a hill again here, so it's a bit and I'm quickening up my pace because I want to get super fit for next week. The one of the emails I got was mentioning the Decca tree. I would advise you to Google that. I'll put it on the screen below. Decca tree. Now, I was fortunate enough, lucky enough, to be around when Decca built the famous Studio 3 at West Hampstead. Just up the road from Abbey Road, by the way. This studio was specifically built for the Mantovani Orchestra, which Decca made huge money out of. They had enormous hits. Biggest was Charmaine, which I actually nicked for my band with the words. And that was our first major hit, Charmaine. 
it was a huge studio and we actually got to record an album in there with a bunch of Italian producers they like that big spacious sound the Decca tree was developed for that situation now before I talk about the Decca tree and then there's a Decca AB and the Decca XY you have to understand phasing with microphones and this is where you've got to be very careful the easiest way to understand the phasing problem shall I say with using two microphones is that if you have a situation where you create what's called an equilateral triangle if you remember that from your school days your geometry and that would be I'll just stop here for a second and explain this two microphones say two feet apart or a meter apart and then the source the trumpet or whatever you're recording or guitar then the same distance a meter or two feet apart so you've got an equilateral triangle that will phase now to get around the phasing it's a suck it and see situation and you get to know this from experience but always keep the, the distance here can be whatever you like to taste a meter but make sure that the distance away from the source is not a meter it can be two meter three meters it can be half a meter but do not create that equilateral triangle that's where the phasing occurs so you've learned something new from deck today so go on Google Wikipedia have a very nice explanation of the whole thing I'm not going to explain it now how the Decca tree is achieved do it they used to put the Decca tree up above an orchestra and then use the whole ambient sound of the room that was the idea in uh, the number three studio huge room it's now used by English National Opera as a rehearsal space I was there a few weeks ago and some of the old staff were still there believe it or not and they gave me they gave me and I'll try and take a photograph and put it on this they gave me the actual red recording perspex from the Decca number one studio where all the Moody Blues stuff was done a lot of our stuff was done there Tom Jones Engelbert Humperdinck you go right through Gilbert and Sullivan Gilbert or Sullivan they go right through major stuff done there tiny little control room by the way I can never understand that and I was present when Johnny Keating and his orchestra recorded a special CD that was something special because he used all the biggest pop musicians as the rhythm section Jim Sullivan I think Jimmy Page was on it uh, Reg Guest playing piano Frank Bush playing bass and it was an amazing album so there we are Deck Klusky I hope I've cleared up a lot about stereo as regards recording very interesting subject stereo and I'll tell you what I'm going to do now I've always wanted to go down there can you see it <sighs> that's a bit of a wood down there I think I'm going to venture down there so if I survive down there I'll see you next week <laughs> this is Dave Klusky serious writer skills makehits.com please share this with your friend friends spread the word and I've got some interesting news for you next time bye